All right, welcome Influx users and other interested parties. Um, this video is all about parsing JSON in Telegraph and assumes that you know something about Telegraph and roughly how it works and kind of how it's laid out. The crux of the information in the video uh, pertains to using Starlark to parse said JSON. And I'll define Starlark shortly uh, for those who aren't familiar. Um, at the, in the second half or, or maybe even more, I'll, I'll show you a live example of coding in Starlark. So we'll do some live coding um, after just a little bit of background. I get asked a lot about the best way to get, you know, insert format data into InfluxDB. The answer is almost always Telegraph because it's easy to get started with and, and plays an important role in optimizing your data flow into Influx itself. So if you want to hear me sell that point a little bit harder, I, I have some links, um, you know, that are overlaid and in the description uh, to some talks I've given in the past that that cover that in a lot more detail, as well as a blog post that kind of accompanies those talks. Um, and that's also linked below. In the context of Telegraph, there are two ways to parse incoming JSON. The JSON parser plugin and the Starlark processor plugin. The parser plugin is really easy to configure and start with, but has limitations when your JSON is slightly more complex than just completely flat. So let's take this JSON as an example. This is not flat JSON. Uh, it's not flat enough for the JSON parser. So, you know, I'll leave, I'll leave out the details, but JSON parser will have trouble parsing this uh, beautifully, I guess is the right way to say that. And I'll give you an example of that here. So um, I was as fair as I could be. I believe, I, I believe that the JSON parser, I, I configured it uh, basically how um, anyone would or could to parse this JSON most appropriately. And so you'll notice that in this output here under JSON parser, these keys are being appended to one another, um, you know, as you go down in levels. And you're also getting uh, these index levels of the, if you have, you know, a number of listed nested uh, sections or blobs, I don't know what the right term is for, um, in the JSON document, I guess. So this is gross, right? This is going to make your data larger on over the wire. It's going to be larger in the cache when you write it to InfluxDB. And it's going to make uh, downstream query ability and explorability of your data just make less sense and sometimes even make certain use cases impossible. So we don't want this. This is what we want. All right, this is the same data. It's a lot cleaner. It has our the tags we want, and then our single field, our single integer metric that we're tracking over time. So let's get into Starlark and, and you know walking through how this happened. It's actually very very simple. But first, I'll we'll uh, do a little primer on Starlark. So Starlark is a dialect of Python. It's used as um, a, an embedded configuration language. It's not a complete Python, but it definitely, definitely comes with most of what, if not all of what you'll need to do any kind of parsing or any other processing. And Starlark was chosen because, um, well, simply Python is a pervasive programming language and especially with, within the context of systems programming, um, the, you know, most of our users are at least familiar with Python and are capable of of you know writing 10, 15, 20 lines of Python code to get something really simple done. Um, embedding it into Telegraph is really useful. So you could do your parsing outside of Telegraph entirely in a in a Python client that you've written yourself from from kind of bottom to top. However, um, embedding it into Telegraph gives you a lot of advantages, like not having to write your own client behavior for one. Telegraph takes care of that. The Starlark processor, because it's a plugin, will have access to all other plugins, just like any other plugin would. So all inputs, if you want them, um, will write to the processor so you can process data from anywhere. Um, they'll have access to other processors and aggregators and as, as well as outputs. So all of that is streamlined for you. Um, and then it gives you access to the Telegraph metric object, which makes working with the metrics as they are laid out in Telegraph itself really, really simple. Um, so you don't have to worry about parsing line protocol yourself or serializing it yourself. So here's the architecture of what we're going to build. Um, this is just a, an instance of Telegraph. Um, and these are potential data sources. We're, for the example, we're going to use a file that'll just be easier. But 
Um, this could be an HTTP endpoint exposing JSON that's continuously updated. The HTTP input plugin can go out and scrape that. Um, a Kafka consumer plugin can get can consume data from a Kafka topic, or you can use another um, input plugin for a different message queue. Um, the JSON parser that I mentioned earlier is a parser plugin, and parser plugins are configured within the inputs. So that's what you're seeing here a little bit. Um, in this case, we're going to forego the JSON parser, as I pro I've kind of alluded to, and use the value parser instead. And I'll explain why, but it's super simple. These arrows, according to the legend, are they represent standard in and standard out, which is basically how the plugins within Telegraph pass metrics along to one another and from one another. So the metrics in JSON are going to be routed through the inputs. They're going to be sent to the value parser and then written out to standard out where the Starlark processor, which is where we're going to be coding, uh, where our Starlark code will go, is going to pick up those metrics it, through its standard in and apply the code, the processing to each metric one at a time, then write those to standard out where the influx DB output will pick it up and write out to influx DB. So if we were to use the HTTP endpoint method, this is the entire solution, right? So let's say that the example JSON I showed before is exposed at some address. This is the entire configuration for the HTTP input plugin. Starlark plugin, this is it, right? Um, I am instantiating the plugin and calling to a script where I'm gonna have a, a uh, script locally on the Telegraph instance. And then, their script itself. So very, very familiar, right? It looks just like Python because it basically is. Um, the only thing we're doing that's sort of strange is um, instead of importing the JSON module that you may be familiar with, we're loading it um, in a Starlark fashion, if you will. Um, and then every single uh, Starlark script is going to have the supply function because we're applying processing to a metric object. So that is that. And let's go ahead and do it live. Let's pull up uh, VS Code where we'll have the three files we need. So this is our Telegraph configuration. Here's your agent config that you're familiar with. Here is the stuff that I already showed you in the slide. And then um, just an output. So this is just going to write to standard out. We're actually not even going to use this, but it needs to be there. Um, here's our blank Starlark file. And here's our, our JSON. So as I mentioned, first thing we need to do is create a, a, an apply function. Okay, so a couple things. One is, um, I'll make this bigger so everyone can read it. Two is, um, I wanna explain this value parser. So um, it's being invoked here within the, in, the file input, or excuse me, here. And so the, if this was the JSON parser, I would I would write JSON here in the quotes. Um, by setting this to string, what I'm doing and calling the, the value parser, what I'm doing is I'm taking the entire JSON blob, that is this, and putting it into a field called value in the metric. So what it's doing is basically writing a new metric that has a field called value, and within that value is just a string, just a long string of this, right? So what it's doing basically, I like to think of it as, it's we're kind of skipping any parsing or processing of this stuff here, this JSON, um, and leaving that all that work for the for Starlark. So Starlark gets it raw. So we're passing. So we're going to access this value field in our Starlark script. But that's what this value parser is doing. And I'm going to um, actually bring in a logging module into the Starlark code so we can essentially do like print debugging to show you what the what's actually going on under the hood. But that's what's happening with this configuration. And obviously, we're calling um, our script from there. So back into here, since the next thing we're going to do is actually use the JSON module, let's load it. So load, um, I believe it's json.star. And then we'll pull the JSON bit out of that. And I'm just going to call this object j and invoke json and decode this is similar to load s load load string for the json module in, in regular python and we're going to pass in the metric that's passed to the apply function so this will be one telegraph metric 
And it, within this, this is one of the values of having access to this metric. Within the metric are, is this attribute called fields. So that's all the fields within the metric. Um, in this metric specifically, because of the value parser, we have this one field called value. So we're going to get it. And that's so that's what J is going to look like. Now, I want to know what J is. I'm sure you do too. You probably don't know what's in J. So this is just kind of a nice tool for when you're writing Starlark. Logging dot star. And then we're just going to get the log stuff out of it. And what what this is basically going to do is allow us to, you can't print in Starlark. So we're going to log dot debug. And I'm going to say, you know, um, this, this is J. Now I'm just not realizing I didn't make this bigger yet. Let's do that first. Okay, that's much better probably. Um, let's make that injectable and then we can use string formatting, stick J in there, let's save the file. And then um, you can see I've actually already been doing this. So, you know, I obviously have to make sure my, my demo works. Um, but we're gonna call telegraph, the telegraph binary we're going to um, call the local configuration in this directory and then we're gonna run the test the test flag which basically just means run all the inputs processors and outputs once or not outputs but but output the the uh, data that's in telegraph for that one batch so that's what we have right so we have we've printed out this statement that this is J and then there's this guy right there so that's what J is right now and um, if I were to have printed out the type of J, the type would be dictionary. I'm gonna, for brevity, I'm not gonna do that, but just trust me on that one. I happen to know that this is gonna, this is a multiple, you know, hence the name of the files, but it's a multiple metric JSON, so I'm just gonna create an empty list. I know that I'm gonna need to fill that. Um, what I wanna do, because this is one, um, there's gonna be, since it's multiple metrics contained in, in J essentially, or what I what I want to define as a metric, I'm going to be I'm going to want to loop through each each uh, portion of the JSON file. So, in or the JSON blob. So in this case, I'm going to want. Um, well, let's let's take a look at it this way. I'm going to want each of these each of these as a group because I want my tags and my fields in the same in the same uh, metric, basically per record. So there's. I don't know what five or six records here. So we're going to loop through that and we're going to call it group and then and we're going to call J. So J has the that stats key. So let's call J stats. And be, um, we don't really care. We don't care to not throw away the metric that we're feeding into the apply function, so we're gonna actually just create a new metric. It's simpler. I like it better to do it that way. So we're just gonna call it stats. What this metric function is doing is taking an argument of what what's going to be the the measurement name. So if you remember the the final output, the measurement name is stats. Name it whatever you want, but that's what we're gonna go with for this example. So new metric, because it's a metric object, it's going to look, it's gonna have sort of a similar layout to that. So um, we're gonna call it and we're, and it hasn't, right now it has an empty attribute of fields, which is a dictionary. And we're gonna set the field. We're only, if you remember the final output, we only care about one field. In fact, I think there is only one. Yeah, there's only one field here. So we're gonna call it count as it is called in the JSON. And we're going to set it to the value of group, which is the, which is basically the I of the iteration over J. And we're, so we're getting the fields key and then we're gonna, we're gonna need count, obviously. And then that'll, ret that'll return the value at that at that specific count, instance of count. Now we want this to output an integer. So right now this is going to be a field. So let's cast int to that. New metric 
dot tags, because we're done with fields, we want, what do we have here? Group, right? So group. And then we're going to call group and tags, I believe it is, right? If I remember correctly. Tags. Yeah, so we're going to go, there's one level, and then we're going to grab the field um, within the tags, which is a little bit confusing given, given um, influx, you know, DB nomenclature, but just know that field pertains to tags. Um, actually, you know what, instead of, we're not going to grab field, we're going to grab the, um, we actually want all of the information contained in these. So within tags, there's actually two, there's actually two uh, sub dictionaries. So we want the first dictionary, which is going to define the group tag, and we want the value from that. I guess we'll leave it at that for now. And we have another tag, right? So um, we want to go to state. We want state and tags. And in this case, we're going to go with the second dictionary within that dictionary. And what is this also value? Um, value, yep. And when we're done, so as far as I'm concerned, we're done making that metric. So metrics.append as you typically do, new metric. And we're gonna return metrics, boom. So as far as I'm concerned, that's done. We could potentially log new metric, right? and just see what we're looking for, what we're looking at. Run this. Whoa, boom. Okay, so that's that's showing us the, it's printing out new metric and it's also printing out our data. Okay, so cool. Um, this is basically done, right? But it kind of looks weird. In, in InfluxDB, um, it's, basically convention to keep everything lowercase. So we're just going to do that for now. And also this is gross. So I want to, I want to uh, stick a, an underscore in there to account for that space. So we don't have to do any escaping. Um, you also notice that this, that this I is, is uh, suffixing the, the integers to, to tell InfluxDB that it is in fact an integer. That was, that's a result of us casting integer to that field. So which metrics did we need to change? Um, we want to change the group tag and we want to change the state tag and we want to change the value of those. So there's, we'll start with group and we'll do just basic, um, your basic string functions. Uh, we'll, we will make them lowercase and then we'll replace the space in there with a underscore. And I think we just have to do that same thing here. Let's run it. Boom. That looks like it is complete. So we can get rid of this log message too. So we're not getting extra output, save that. And we're done. So we can get rid of the, we can, we don't even have to have this loaded in anymore. So that is the final Starlark script. And that is an example of parsing JSON that looks like this. So hopefully uh, you enjoyed that. Um, if it wasn't super entertaining, hopefully at least it was useful in your day-to-day -day job. <laughs> so hopefully this is useful to people, I, you know, to, to any of the people I've already spoken to that need to parse JSON from a whole bunch of different sources and they're having trouble with doing that in Telegraph. This should help you enormously. Also, you know, ping us, we're happy to help. Take it easy.